and welcome to another episode of the Scar Night Magazine vodcast. This month, in the run up to Christmas, we thought it'd be a good idea to give you some advice if you're thinking about buying your first telescope. So, here's our video guide to what you need to look out for when you're buying your first scope. So, there are three main types of telescope there are the reflectors the refractors, and what are known as the catadioptric telescopes, or compound telescopes. Now, the reflectors basically use a polished mirror to collect light from celestial objects and focus it at the eyepiece where the image is formed. Refractors use a lens to do the same thing, whilst catadioptric telescopes basically use a mixture of lenses and mirrors to produce the image that we see when we look through the eyepiece. Now, within these types, there are lots of different telescope designs. So, with the reflectors, for example, there are Newtonian reflectors, which is essentially a long cylindrical tube with a main mirror at one end and a little eyepiece uh, holder coming off the side at the very top. There's also, in the reflector category, the Dobsonian telescope, which is essentially a Newtonian reflector, but on a very simple swivelling mount. Now at the front here we actually have a 66mm refractor and here we have a quite large 152mm Maxitov Cassegrain which is a type of catadioptric telescope. Well, if you want to look at fainter objects, things like galaxies and nebulae, you'll probably want a reflecting telescope. And I'd actually say that Dobsonian telescopes are pretty good for this because you can get quite a large mirror uh, for the amount of money that you pay. If you want something that's a little bit more portable, then a Maxutov cast grain might be for you. If you want a good all-round beginner's telescope, then try something like a 4-6 to six inch Newtonian reflector. That'll show you things like the planets, the brighter nebulae, certainly the moon surface, the craters and the mountains and the seas, as well as some of the more interesting clusters and double stars. The main specification you want to look for when buying a telescope is not the magnification. You'll often see people saying, this has hundreds of times magnification. That's not what you want to be looking for. You actually want to look for the aperture. That is essentially the size of the main lens or mirror. So in the case of this Maxutov, it will be the size of the mirror at the back here. And in the case of this refractor down here, that would be the size of the main front lens. So the aperture is really important because the bigger the main mirror or the bigger the main lens, the more light the telescope can gather. That means that if you're looking at a faint galaxy, you can collect more photons of light and the image at the eyepiece will be brighter. So magnification is essentially the number of times a telescope enlarges the naked eye view of an object. So it could be the moon or Jupiter, say. Now you work out the magnification by knowing two things about the equipment you're using. You need to know, one, the focal length of the telescope you're using, as well as the focal length of the eyepiece you're using. And you can find the focal length of the eyepiece because it's usually inscribed on all the eyepieces. In this case, this one's a 30mm eyepiece. This one here, this one is a 13mm eyepiece. And the way you work out the magnification is simply you divide the telescope's focal length by the focal length of the eyepiece. So if you are using a 2000 mm focal length telescope and you're using a 20 mm eyepiece in the eyepiece holder, you'd have a magnification of 100 times. So you can see from the way we calculate the magnification of a telescope that changing the eyepieces with different focal lengths will change the magnification. So if you're using a much shorter focal length eyepiece, like this 10mm here, you'll get a much more magnified view with this one than you will with a 30mm eyepiece like this one. But you don't want to over magnify when you're using your telescope. It's a common misconception that you should really push up the magnification and try and get as much of it as possible. You don't actually want to do that. You want to magnify as much as your telescope and the conditions allow. Remember, if you're magnifying too much, you're also magnifying all the defects with the view. So if the atmosphere is undulating, uh, you're actually magnifying those undulations and you create a worse image than if you just held back the magnification and used a lower value. You will get a better image. Your first telescope will probably come with one or two eyepieces, and it's a good idea to have a small range of eyepieces so that you can get different magnifications. Now, if you're looking at fainter, wider objects, something like a galaxy, like M31, the Andromeda galaxy, you don't want to have a lot of magnification. What you actually want is a wider field of view, which is what you'll get if you're using a longer focal length eyepiece. If, however, you want to look at a planet, say Jupiter at the moment, or the moon's surface to look at some craters, you'll want a shorter focal length eyepiece, so something like this 10mm eyepiece would be ideal in that case. 
So there are two main types of telescope mount. You have your altazimuth mounts and your equatorial mounts. Now altazimuth mounts are the simplest type of mount. They simply move around and around horizontally which is known as azimuth, moving in azimuth, and up and down, which is moving in altitude. And they can move between 0 degrees altitude, which is the horizon, and 90 degrees altitude, which is straight above you, a point known as the zenith. Now, a simple photographic tripod like this one could be considered an altazimuth mount, as it does exactly the same thing. It moves around and around in azimuth and up and down. And that's a very easy way of mounting a telescope. You can put it on a photographic tripod or a simple altazimuth mount, and that'll be great for moving around the sky and looking at different things, um, but probably not good for tracking them. And that's where the equatorial mount comes in. That's essentially a mount that aligns a telescope to the rotation axis of the Earth so that it only needs to move in one axis to follow a star. The mount is one of the most important parts of the telescope because if you don't have a sturdy, solid mount, the telescope's going to wobble all over the place. So when you're looking at your telescope, one thing you really need to do is check that the mount is solid. You don't want any plastic, flimsy parts that are going to move around. You want something that's going to be rigid for the telescope to sit on top of very safely and securely. Well, go-to telescopes are actually really popular nowadays. What you need to do to use a go-to telescope is align it to the night sky so it knows where it's pointing, and then you can use the little computer in the onboard handset to navigate to thousands of different objects. So this is great if you want to quickly whiz across the sky looking at lots of different objects, but if you want to slowly learn the night sky and learn how to use a telescope, a go-to telescope is perhaps not the best thing to start off with. In that case, you probably just want a manual telescope without any of the bells and whistles. Well, if you're not ready to get a telescope, why not get a pair of binoculars? A good pair like these might cost around about £25, and you can see all sorts of things through them. You can see star clusters, some of the brighter nebulae and galaxies, and they'll also show you Jupiter's moons and some of the craters on our own moon. Well, that's it for this episode of the Sky at Night magazine vodcast. We hope now that you get a better idea of what to look for when you're buying your first telescope. If you're interested in learning more about getting started in stargazing, then on our cover disc each month we have these print out and keep guides to learning astronomy in 10 easy steps and buying your first telescope, so there's lots of information there. But meanwhile, from me, that's all. Clear skies, and I'll see you next month.